In this lesson, I'm going to show you how to play Peter Frampton's Baby I Love Your Way. And this is a pretty straight ahead song in the key of G. Uh, it's got a lot of really good approaches, meaning like the transitions between the chord changes have some very uh, some different approaches. Chromatic approaches, octaves, fifths, this sort of thing. I, I actually know Stanley Sheldon, the guy who played the part. I've done some work with Frampton in the studio and I've met him on gigs and stuff. And so he, he uh, is a super nice guy and it's kind of fun to do a transcription of the original live recording from Frampton Comes Alive. That's what this is based on. Um, they obviously play it out all the time, but and he does all sorts of other bass lines, but I'm going back to the original recording so that you have a reference on YouTube to play along with this chart. Now I'm just going one time through the intro, verse, and chorus because they're all the rest of it is all sort of permutations of that. I think you get the basic idea and you can start um, messing around with it to come up with your own lines. So um, in the intro, it starts off with the acoustic guitar the band doesn't come in until we get to the E minor D C chord progression there. So you have a bar of rest and then some more rests in the second bar in the last two eighth notes. We start uh, from the E minor, E minor D to a C, then to a B minor. And then we've got this little riff. It's an anticipated, the, the D chord is anticip anticipated in eighth note. So if we're, if I'm counting quarter notes here with my foot, we go from the E, C, to the B minor, and then here we go, A, I'm sorry, it's anticipated coming to the D. Then we get into the verse. The verse, we start off uh, G, half notes, and then we do, a, it's a D over an F sharp in the bass. Then we get to the E minor, and I'm going to play the E minor up here on the seventh fret because of the riff he plays. So we actually walk down there and we're using that octave. To get to the C. So let's take a look at those next two bars. Once I get to the C, one. And it's going to repeat again, so we're going back to the G. A chromatic approach back up to the G. So already in just the verse, we have um, using uh, fifths and octaves on the E minor. walk down to the C, and then a, uh, a diatonic approach to the F. And then full chromatic going back into the G. So you see already there's a, a whole series of approaches he's used just in the first four bars of the verse. That verse repeats, and then um, we get into what I call the B section here. Um, which is starts on B minor. And what's going to be different here is I'm going to start here on the second fret. But then this chromatic approach to the E, I'm going to scooch way up to the ninth fret here to get ready to do the octave here, fifth and octave. Then we go to an A here. That's how we get into the chorus. Let me do that again here. So now notice how uh, on that little figure on the D there, there's one dead note. Then I mute the string but hit the note. It's more of a rhythmic thing, obviously with a dead note. Instead of, it's just a little bit cooler, a little bit hipper. 
And also because you write out a harmonic, even when you're muting the strings, you might get a little harmonic out of it. It's good to lay a few fingers there. Like that. It's kind of hard to see, but I'm, I'm quickly, I'm, this is fretted and this is muted. And on camera, you don't see a lot of difference, but I've got my middle finger fretting and, and my other fingers are just, just barely off the string. But then when I go like that, all four of my fingers are resting on the string and it makes it dead. So that's very subtle looking, but makes a big difference in the sound. Okay, then we're into the chorus. This is this one took me a, a second to transcribe because you would think it would just go up diatonically up the scale, just like the major scale to the D, but he doesn't. He's using a chromatic approach from the C. Sort of mirroring what he does going to the A minor. Sorry. Okay, so we start on the G, and then it's an open A, and then C, chromatic up to the D. Then um, we do sort of the same thing to the A minor. Same, you're mirroring the chromatic approach to the A minor, and then we have the sort of the riff that we all know. That's the one you know from the song. So now this is a variation, the, 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 basically the chorus repeats four times. So I transcribed the whole thing so you can get all these different little approaches that he uses each time around. Uh, <clears throat> so this next one, we do the standard octave thing, but then we use an open A, which if you know your harmony, we're doing five of D, A to D. That's uh, you know a cadence to bring it to, to bring it to D. So there is some logic to that, right? <clears throat> and then uh, we're doing three note chromatic. Okay. Now uh, this last time around, we're gonna we go back into the verse. So <clears throat> from the A minor. So what instead of da 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 it's da 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 So we're chromatic approach up to the fifth of G. Again, there's some lots of logic to this, lots of musical logic too. That's our approach, chromatic to the fifth and then back up to G again. So um that's all I've transcribed to this. There are some variations in all the, the, the rest of the form that you can listen to. But just alone in these, what, 16 bars worth of stuff, he's got all kinds of approaches to go from one chord to the other. And I think that's the interesting thing and the takeaway from, from a great bass line uh, from Stanley Sheldon. Um, Baby, I love your way. Peter Frampton comes alive. He's a friend of mine. So is Stanley. And this is a great bass line. So there you go.